Hello and welcome to our hands-on data structures and algorithms course in Rust. My name is Matthew Studley and I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. I am a software developer. I'm quite a Rust enthusiast. I do love this language and I'm a storyteller and board game designer and you can find out more about me at storyfeet.com. And now the course overview. Again, run through. Introduction to Rust syntax, lifetime, and generics. All of these three things are key Rust features, but we have to get through them before we can do much else. This course is intended to work for people who are fairly new to programming. Not absolute beginners, but fairly new to programming and bring you into some of the more complicated stuff as we go. The section two is sorting and algorithm complexity. So we'll learn about the time it takes to sort a list depending on the methods you use. And we have several methods to do that with. Section three will be lists and trees, whether we're doing linked lists or binary trees or other kinds of trees. All of those structures have a purpose and we will cover that in more detail and how to write them. Section four will be all about graphs. And this is the computer science kind of graph with a selection of nodes and edges connecting them, as can be used to represent all kinds of things like friendships on Facebook or routes on like Google Maps or something. And we're going to be running some pathfinding algorithms on that and using that to explore the concepts of NP complete problems, these problems that seem unsolvable in reasonable time as it gets bigger. Section five, we're going to actually build our own hash map. So this will give you some of the scope on how hash maps work internally so you can build your own or so you can know why they are so popular in so many cases. Section six, we're going to be looking at entity component systems. Now this kind of feels a bit off topic in some ways, but there's such a different data structure, such a different way of thinking about programming. I felt it was really worth including in this course as the aim is to give you a good picture of all of the options available. And section seven, we're going to be looking at how we can manage persistent data storage. And actually we're going to be building something like a hash map as a file. One of the first things we're going to focus on as we begin this course is just getting a grasp on Rust and how it works as a language and why you might want to use it as the benefits it brings and what they are. Rust is actually a really appropriate language for a data structures and algorithms course because it is such a low level language. You can very clearly make decisions at pointer level what you want to happen when and where. And yet, because of its memory safety features, you can do that confidently without being afraid you're going to make memory leaks all over your programs. Another goal is just to get a good grip on some common algorithms used in programming all over the place. These are normally library algorithms. You normally don't have to write them yourselves, but it's good to know what they are and how they work so you can make good choices and give you confidence when you do want to build a library of some kind you can do that because you understand how they work. Again, and there are lots of design decisions made when building structures like this and usable algorithms. And this course aims to give you a bit of a scope on how to work out what is appropriate, whether you're choosing a library to use or whether you're writing your own library to know which kind of design decisions you should be making and which kind of structures to use. So a couple of caveats that's worth mentioning. This course is a very hands on. As we go through the course, we are going to be building the structures in Rust. So as we code it, hopefully you will understand and see how things work. I will explain it, but do take the time as well to just pause the videos here and there just to make sure you get what I've written and how it works. I do leave some programming errors in the videos, not all. It's very hard to program without making any errors even if you've already written the code three times in the past you're still going to make some mistakes i don't leave all of the errors in some i edit out but i keep them in where i believe it's helpful for you to see the error being solved i generally use small variable names for small scopes and big variable names for big scopes again the longer the variable has to last throughout your code the more important it is that the name is very meaningful but if it's just in a very small space, then short names are easier to type and easier to read for the users. And lastly, I do believe this course should be a challenge for you. There are plenty of things that I think will be difficult, but stick at it. Give it a try. If you can get the code working and understand it, you will come away with a good grasp of how all of this stuff can work under the hood. 
some prerequisites for the course, some basic knowledge of some programming language would be helpful. It doesn't need to be very deep. We will cover more, but if you've done some programming in the past, that would be very helpful for this course. And you need to be ready to learn this course. It goes pretty fast, if I'm honest. If you are completely new to programming, consider my previous Rust in 7 Days course. That is, should also be available through this system. And let's get started, shall we?